Hello, I'm Brian Hempel, and I'll be presenting joint work with my advisor, Ravi Chug, as well as Justin Lubin and Grace Liu from the University of Chicago. I'd like to show you a new way to incorporate structured editing into the programming workflow. Telling what computers to do is really hard, and part of the problem is that text is not a great fit for making a program. The number of random text buffers that will parse as a program, much less do anything useful, is vanishingly small. Even this third example here, it looks like a program, but guess what? It's not. There's a syntax error. So unstructured text is hard for beginners because it's so easy to make syntax errors and because they have to use their head rather than relying on the computer to structure the code correctly. But even if you're an expert, like a sheepdog herding sheep, you spend a lot of your time corralling text just to get your program back into a valid state. The problem here is that your program isn't text. It's an abstract syntax tree, and text manipulations are not abstract syntax tree manipulations. So text might not be the best UI for creating programs. There are structured editors like Scratch or Touch Develop that ensure your program is always syntactically correct. However, outside of education, structured editors have yet to catch on. They still have a lot of unsolved UI challenges, so text is still preferred by expert programmers for its freedom and familiarity. A more common solution is to rely on automatic refactoring tools to transform your code in a structure-preserving way. You text select the code you want to refactor, you navigate a menu of possible refactorings, and then you configure the refactoring through a dialog box. Automatic refactorings can be powerful, but there's a few pain points in their traditional UI. When selecting code, some code regions are awkward to text select. For example, Eclipse can be unforgiving if you don't get your text selection around the expressions perfect. A second problem with text selection is that it's not ergonomic to select multiple pieces of code if a refactoring could support multiple arguments. Once you've selected your code, you're faced with a potentially long list of refactorings. And over the years, this list is only going to get longer as your editor acquires more features. And then finally, once you choose a refactoring, it may not apply right away. Many refactorings interrupt your workflow by opening a dialog box demanding more configuration before you can return to programming. So we would like to streamline this whole UI. So we present Deuce, a regular text-based program editor augmented with structural affordances to make code transformation flow more naturally. To address each of these problems first, we add structure selection to allow quick and correct selection of one or more code elements within your program. Second, based on the current selections, we display a short menu of context-sensitive transformations. Compared to a traditional right-click menu, we leverage the multiple selections to show even fewer options. And third, prior research has shown that in practice, up to 90% of refactoring settings remain unchanged from their defaults. So to keep the workflow moving, we forego dialog boxes and instead offer a handful of reasonable defaults. Deuce's structure selection and context-sensitive short menus with defaults are best shown by demonstration, so let's take a look. I want to first emphasize that you could implement these features of Deuce on top of any text-based language. We chose to implement Deuce in Sketch and Sketch. Sketch and Sketch is an experimental editor for writing programs that produce SVG vector graphics. All right, so we have our code here on the left. The language here is a simple functional programming language. It has a lot of parens, but it's nothing fancy. Let's focus on this part right here. This is a function call to the image library function with seven arguments. It's clear that the first argument, light gray, is the background color, but it's not clear what these numeric arguments are. So let's introduce local variables to give them names. To make a structure selection, hold down shift. We can select numbers, we can select strings, expressions, definitions, or even white space, and we'll see why that's useful in a, bit, in a minute. To actually make a selection, hold the, uh, click the number while you're holding down shift. Once we make a selection, a short menu of context-sensitive transformations appear. Now, currently, we've implemented more than 20 transformations that interface with the UI, but only two of those transformations can apply to the single number we've selected, so only two appear, and we'll talk about why there aren't more later. Let's look at the introduce variable tool. 
Once we hover the introduce variable tool, a submenu appears because some of our tools can produce more than one options. In this case, there's only one option, so there's only one item in the submenu. If we hover the one possible result, it'll preview in the code, and then to apply it, we click. Notice, there were no dialog boxes. The introduce variable tool chose a default name of width for our, our new variable. How did it know? Well, it looked at the image function in the standard library and noticed that in the standard library, the image function's fourth argument was called width there, so it chose that as a default here. All right, we can go ahead and introduce a variable for height the same way. Hold shift, click on the number for height, go to introduce variable, hover to preview, and click to apply. There we go. Again, it shows a default name of height for us by looking at the image function in the standard library. Let's also introduce variables for the x and y coordinates. We can actually introduce variables for both in a single transformation. Structure selection makes multiple selection easy. Just hold shift and click the two arguments. Now, when we have two numbers selected, actually there's more transforms available than when we have just one number selected, so we see more options in the list. But we still want to introduce variables, so we'll go to that. Hover to preview and click to apply. Our language supports multiple assignment using lists, so it uh, so the transform assigned x and y on a single line for us. And maybe we want to assign width and height on a single line as well, since we can do this multiple assignment. To do that, we'll select width, and here's where selecting white space is useful. We can select the white space before height. Selected white, white space, shown in blue, serves as a target position for the transformations. Now with width selected in a target position, there's only two transformations available. We can either move to the target position or duplicate to the target position. The transformations that don't use a target position don't appear in this list. Similarly, if we deselect the white space, we don't see move definition and uh, duplicate definition in this list. Now in a traditional right-click menu, menu refactoring, say in Eclipse, move and duplicate would have to appear in this list because you would choose the transformation, then you would choose a target position in the dialog. But we assume that you're not going to move or duplicate until you choose a target position, and that's how we keep the menus short. So let's actually do the transform now. Go ahead, we'll go ahead and select that white space again, go to move, and then move width and height together, and it very nicely creates a multiple assignment on a single line for us. And maybe for stylistic reasons, we want to see what, would, what it would look like if width, height, x, and y were all on the same line. So we can do that as well. Select, select, select the sliver of white space after y as the target position, and then move them all together on the same line. There we go. So I've demonstrated Deuce's structure selection, and I've talked about how we use the multiple selection to keep the menu short. And we've also already seen a lot of reasonable defaults. X, Y, width, and height here are actually all default names. Now let's look at a case where we might not like the defaults for a transformation. So let's turn this image definition into a function. We'll select the whole definition, and then let's try create function from definition. Aha! Here the transform is offering two choices for the defaults. We can either turn all of the constants into arguments, so our function would have six arguments, or we can only turn those constants that we had named into arguments, and then there's four arguments to our function. So there could be a lot of options here, and what, let's say we don't like either of these options. What if we just want our function to be parameterized over x and y only? Well, this might be a case where you could open up a dialog box and ask, what do you want to become arguments? And in the future, we do imagine that some of our transformations will have to open up dialog boxes. But in this case, at least, we can get the result we want by applying more transforms. So we'll select the version with four arguments. And notice it transforms the definition to a function and the variable usage to a call site. Then to get rid of the arguments we don't want, we simply select them, go to remove arguments, and then they're removed from the definition and the call site as well. There we go. On the topic of defaults, let's conclude our demo with a transformation that doesn't have a default, rename. We want a better name for our function than image1, so we'll select the name, Go to rename, and here in lieu of a dialog box, we show an inline text box, and I can fill this in with XC2018, and then press enter to apply the rename. There we go. 
So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how Deuce adds structured editing on top of regular text. We ease code selection by providing structure multi-selection, and we ease invoking transforms by offering a short menu of transforms based on the multiple items selected, and then we choose to rely on defaults to avoid interrupting the workflow with dialog boxes. To provide validation to our approach, we conducted a user study to see if Deuce was either more effective or if Deuce was preferred compared to a traditional refactoring workflow. For the user study, Deuce operated just like the previous demonstration, although in the user study materials we called it box select mode. As a baseline for comparison, we also simulated a traditional refactoring workflow within Sketch and Sketch, which we called text select mode. You would regular text select one argument, and then you would right click to show the refactorings that could use that argument. And here, again, the list of transforms was longer because you only text selected one co code element. We can't rely on the multiple selection to narrow down the list. So for example, you, you'd see move definitions in this menu, even though you haven't selected a target position yet. So you can then choose the transform, and then you configure the transform by selecting the remaining arguments. And this kind of simulates a dialog box. And then finally, you choose one of the default results. And the defaults are the same between uh, traditional and DS mode. So within each session, each of our 21 participants went through a self-guided tutorial, walking them through the language and having them practice the transformations in both traditional and deuce modes. After the tutorial, the text edits were disabled and they performed four head-to-head -head tasks. And each of these head-to-head -head tasks was performed twice, once in deuce mode and once in traditional mode. The order was all randomized. After the eight head-to-head -head tasks, now that the participants had a lot of experience using both modes, we gave them two final tasks where they were allowed to mix and match either deuce mode or traditional mode. They could use one transform or the other. So then we could see which mode they preferred using. And then finally, there was a brief exit survey. So to our research questions, was deuce more effective than a traditional refactoring workflow? To answer this, first we looked at how often participants were able to complete the head-to-head -head tasks. Remember, participants saw each head-to-head -head task twice. If their first encounter with a task was in deuce mode, then their second encounter was in traditional mode and vice versa. For first encounters with a task, users in traditional mode seem to have been more likely to complete the task. However, on the second encounter with a task, the task was no more likely to be completed in traditional or deuce modes. The fact that traditional mode was better for completing new tasks suggests that Deuce doesn't help users discover new transformations. However, if we look at time to completion among the users who were successful at completing tasks, while Deuce and traditional mode were about the same speed for the first encounter, those participants that used Deuce on the second encounter were slightly faster. So Deuce doesn't help users discover transforms, but it may be faster to use once it's learned. So on to our second question, is deuce mode preferred to traditional mode? And we looked at two different ways to answer this question. First, in the exit survey, we asked participants about their experience using the head in the head-to-head -head tasks. For each of the tasks, which mode they thought was better for that task. And the dis distributions were the same for, about, for each task. So we'll just show the mean distribution here. And we can see that participants expressed a modest preference for deuce mode. Recall that after the head-to-head -head tasks, we also had participants perform two mix and match tasks where they could use one mode for one transformation, one for the other, however they pleased. And in that case, what did participants use when given the freedom to choose either mode? Well, almost all our participants did most of their transformations in deuce mode. If we further break this down by tool usage, deuce was preferred for most transformations, but one notable exception was the rename tool. So why is this? Well, it turns out that rename is always a single argument tool. You're only selecting one thing to rename. And we hypothesize that Deuce's advantages are maximized for multi-argument transforms because you can perform all your selections together. All right, to summarize the results of what we learned from our user study, Deuce didn't help users discover new transforms. And so traditional mode may be better for learning, but Deuce may be faster once it's learned and when given a choice to what to use, most users prefer using Deuce, particularly for multi-argument transforms. So participants like using Deuce, but there are still several questions open for future work. First, we've only tested small programs so far. 
There may be additional challenges scaling up Deuce for larger programs. For example, how do you handle selections that are off the screen or in another file? Second, we disabled text edits for the user study, so we haven't even begun to address the question of, of how to encourage people to use refactoring tools while they're text editing. Also, our 20-some transformations right now are all hand-coded. It would be great to have a, a domain-specific language for creating new transformations. And finally, we'd love to see Deuce implemented for a language that people use in a popular text editor like Atom. But before concluding, I'd like to briefly mention some related refactoring and structured editing work. Murphy, Hill, and Black proposed a couple techniques to help users make valid selections before invoking a refactoring. In particular, BoxView displayed boxes in the sidebar that could be clicked to select the corresponding code region. In contrast to our approach, we draw the boxes directly on the code. Lee et al. identified and implemented a number of refactorings that could be unambiguously invoked by drag and drop. Although drag and drop by itself doesn't handle multiple selection or multiple possible results like we do in Deuce, it would, however, be great to implement drag and drop gest gestures for a subset of Deuce's transformations. Finally, several hybrid editors have explored adding, vi adding varying degrees of structural organization onto text-based editing. In contrast to all these approaches, our specific focus is on specifying and invoking refactorings. All right, in conclusion, Deuce leverages structural multi-selection, short context-sensitive menus, and defaults to streamline code transformation, all within the familiarity and freedom of a standard text-based code editor. If you'd like to try Deuce for yourself, just search for Sketch and Sketch online. Thank you for listening, and I'd be happy to take any questions now.